Ever wonder where the unforgettable cast of Breaking Bad is now? Find out who's still ruling Hollywood, who's taken surprising career turns and hear about the heartbreaking challenges some actors have faced. Did you catch Heisenberg's secret cameo in another hit show? Or spot a Breaking Bad cast in unexpected roles? Plus, some fan favorites have big new projects on the way. Stick around to see where the Breaking Bad cast is now. All right, Breaking Bad fans, let's talk about the man who made us love and fear, a chemistry teacher. Yep, I'm talking about Brian Cranston, the guy who turned the mild-mannered Walter White into the legendary Heisenberg, a character that's pretty much burned into TV history. But before he was cooking in an RV, Brian was playing a different kind of dad, Hal, the goofball father and Malcolm in the middle. From roller skating stunts to full-on slapstick comedy, he nailed the role of the lovable and slightly unhinged dad. Oh, and don't forget his run as the sneaky dentist on Seinfeld. Brian's career back then, full of hidden gems that would make any fan laugh now knowing what he'd become. And then came Breaking Bad. Watching Walt's transformation from a struggling high school teacher to a drug kingpin was nothing short of mind-blowing. Cranston didn't just play the role, he lived it, scene by scene, until I Am The Danger became the stuff of legend. Fun fact, did you know Cranston insisted on doing some of his own stunts? After Breaking Bad, Brian didn't slow down. He took on roles in serious films like Trumbo, snagged an Oscar nomination, fought off a Godzilla, and even returned to TV with Your Honor. On the personal side, Brian's got a family. He's been married to his wife, Robin Dearden, since the 80s. They've got a daughter, and he's a bit of a family guy when he's not dominating the screen. There's even a rumor that he kept the iconic Heisenberg hat as a memento. I mean, who wouldn't? Oh, and if you're looking for a deeper dive into his life, check out his book, A Life in Parts. It's full of behind-the-scenes stories and a ton of Cranston's classic humor. Say my name. Yes. Now, let's chat about the one and only Aaron Paul, the man who made Yo, Mr. White a catchphrase. Before his iconic role as Jesse Pinkman, Aaron was hustling in Hollywood with small parts in shows like The X-Files, Veronica Mars, K-Pax, and even a bit role in Mission, Impossible 3. He was the guy you might have seen and thought, wait, haven't I seen him somewhere before? Then Breaking Bad happened, and Aaron's portrayal of Jesse Pinkman, the street smart kid with a heart of gold and a tragic streak, stole the show. I mean, it's not easy going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Bryan Cranston, but Aaron did it and walked away with three Emmys. Not bad for a character who was originally supposed to be killed off in season one. Since the Breaking Bad finale, Aaron's kept himself busy. He starred in Need for Speed, kind of his shot at the action genre, and got deeper into the world of sci-fi with Westworld. If you caught his recent role in Duel, you'd see that he's still got that signature intensity, though maybe with fewer meth labs this time around. He also reprised his role as Jesse in El Camino, which gave fans the closure they didn't even know they needed. In 2023, he starred as Cliff in the season 6 episode of the series Black Mirror Beyond the Sea, for which he received praise. But he's not just about the screen. Aaron's also co-founded a mezcal brand, Dos Hombres, with Brian Cranston, because who wouldn't want to start a business with their former meth-cooking partner? In his personal life, he's a family man, married to Lauren Parsekian, and they have two children. You kill Mr. White, you're gonna have to kill me too. Let's talk about the man who made criminal defense look, well, colorful, Bob Odenkirk, better known as the legendary Saul Goodman. But before he was slipping us those Better Call Saul ads, Odenkirk had quite the comedy career. He was a writer on Saturday Night Live and co-created the cult comedy show Mr. Show with Bob and David, a favorite among comedy nerds. If you saw him on The Larry Sanders Show or Seinfeld, you got a glimpse of his comedic chops long before he stepped into the courtroom. Then, along came Breaking Bad, and suddenly, the sleazy, charming, criminal lawyer Saul Goodman was born. Remember the scene when he asked if Walt and Jesse had a guilty look? Classic Saul. His portrayal was so good he earned his own spin-off, Better Call Saul, and turned what was once a side character into a deeply complex and beloved anti-hero. Only Odenkirk could make a legal loophole seem heroic. Post-Breaking Bad, 
Bob starred in movies like Nebraska and proved his action hero status in Nobody, kicking more butt than we ever thought Saul Goodman could. And good news for fans, he's already starred in Nobody 2, which is set to hit theaters 2025. If you're into memoirs, his book Comedy 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 Drama is full of behind-the-scenes stories and his journey from comedy to drama. On the personal side, Bob's a family man with two kids, and he's been open about his passion for writing and staying creative. Despite his near-fatal heart attack in 2021, he bounced back like a champ and kept fans rooting for him on and off the screen. Fun fact, on the show Finding Your Roots, Odenkirk learned that he is descended from an illegitimate son of Frederick Charles, making him an 11th cousin to King Charles III. Your sixth great-grandfather was a duke. <laughs> what? Oh man, that's so great. Anna Gunn, the actress who brought us the complicated, layered, and unforgettable Skylar White. Before she was calculating money in car washes, Anna had a solid run in TV. She popped up in shows like The Practice and Deadwood, giving us a glimpse of her knack for strong, dramatic roles. If you're a fan of legal dramas, you might have caught her in Law and & Order 2. Her other film credits include Without Evidence, Enemy of the State, Treading Water, and Red State. Now let's talk about Skylar White. Love her or hate her, you can't deny she was crucial to the Breaking Bad story. Anna's performance gave Skylar a blend of strength, vulnerability, and realism that kept us all glued to our screens. Remember when she bought that car wash or stood up to Walt in those unforgettable showdowns? Skylar was more than just a supporting character. She was the only one who could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Heisenberg. After Breaking Bad, Anna starred in Grace Point and appeared in films like Little Red Wagon and Sully. Recently, she's been active in theater, proving she's just as comfortable on stage as she is on screen. Plus, she's dabbled in writing, adding even more depth to her already impressive career. On a personal note, Anna's a proud mom of two daughters. Fun fact, she's a bit of a yoga enthusiast, which probably helped during those tense scenes with Walt. Get out of here. Now. Now I want to dive into the man who made fried chicken. Absolutely terrifying, Giancarlo Esposito. Now, before he became the masterful and composed Gus Fring on Breaking Bad, Esposito had already built an impressive career. You might have caught him in Do the Right Thing or Malcolm X, both Spike Lee joints. He was also in The Usual Suspects Ali and in TV shows such as Miami Vice and Spencer for hire. Now, when he stepped into the role of Gus Fring, something clicked. He wasn't just another villain, he was the most methodical, cold-blooded criminal ever to cook up a Los Pollos Hermanos family meal. The way he balanced kindness and sheer menace had fans hooked, and that's why he became a defining face of the series. Since Breaking Bad wrapped up, Giancarlo has been busy. He's shown up in some pretty heavy-hitting series like The Mandalorian as Moff Gideon, another calm and calculated villain. And he's got a role in The Boys, where he continues to play those cool in-control characters. He's also voicing Lex Luthor in Harley Quinn, because apparently he's the go-to guy for masterminds. What's interesting is that Giancarlo isn't just about the on-screen roles. He's also a motivational speaker and an entrepreneur. He co-founded a company called this Esposito Vida. Yep, a play on his own name, and he's even directed a few projects himself. For a guy who plays characters who rarely smile, he's surprisingly warm and enthusiastic in real life. Giancarlo was once married to Joy McManigle, and together they raised four daughters. Though the couple eventually divorced, the aftermath of the split was challenging for Esposito. Financial hardships led him to declare bankruptcy, pushing him to a point where he even contemplated a tragic plan, arranging his own murder to secure insurance money for his daughters. But then, life took a turn. He was cast in Breaking Bad, a role that would change everything. <laughs> Let's talk about the man who kept us all laughing and on edge, the one and only Dean Norris, aka Hank Schrader. Before he became everyone's favorite DEA agent, Dean was already a Hollywood veteran. He had roles in classic films like Terminator 2, Total Recall, The Firm, Lethal Weapon 2, and Starship Troopers showing off his knack for tough guy roles. If you've ever seen him pop up in NYPD Blue or The X-Files, you know he's always had a taste for the gritty and intense. It's like Hank was the role he was meant to play all along. Hank Schrader wasn't just a cop, he was a force of nature. 
From his boisterous laugh to that relentless, almost obsessive pursuit of Heisenberg, Hank's character was a perfect mix of humor, strength, and tragedy. Dean made Hank a character we rooted for even as he got closer and closer to Walt's secret. After Breaking Bad, Dean took on big roles in shows like Under the Dome and Claws, proving he's got way more up his sleeve than just Hank. More recently, you might have caught him in Netflix's scary stories to tell in the dark and law and order. Beyond acting, Dean's got a bit of a fun side business. He runs a bar in Indiana called Schraderbrow, named after Hank's infamous homebrew. White boy don't like, let's make a deal, huh? White boy's gonna kick your ass, you don't stop wasting his time. The man, the myth, the mic, Jonathan Banks. He's the actor who made Grumpy look good, and his role as Mike Ermentrot has cemented him as a fan favorite. But before he was silently judging Jesse or giving Walt a cold stare, Banks had a long, gritty career that might surprise you. Back in the 80s, Jonathan was known for playing tough guys, like his role in Beverly Hills Cop as Zack, the ruthless henchman. He was also a staple in TV crime dramas, Wise Guy being a standout, and then came Breaking Bad, where Jonathan Banks gave us the ultimate fixer, Mike Ehrmantraut. Mike was the guy who could clean up any mess, deliver a deadpan line with perfect timing, and somehow make parking lot surveillance seem like an art form. Fun fact, Banks improvised a lot of his character's best one-liners, adding his own flavor to the role. Remember his no half measures speech? It was pure, unfiltered Banks. Post-Breaking Bad, Jonathan reprised his role as Mike in Better Call Saul, giving fans a deeper look into Mike's backstory. He's also popped up in animated hits like The Incredibles 2 and has kept busy with TV guest spots, including Community, where he played a cranky professor. Not much of a stretch, right? In 2017, Banks took on the role of the main antagonist in the film Mudbound. Then, in 2020, he brought his talent to Netflix's animated series EF is for Family, joining the cast in its fourth season as Bill Murphy. Banks is a family man, proud of his kids, and believe it or not, a bit of a softy when it comes to animals. He's even joked about how playing Mike has made him better at giving life advice, though hopefully not the cleaner kind. No more half measures, Walter. Let's talk about the man behind one of the show's most unforgettable villains, Stephen Bauer. Before he was lounging by the pool in Mexico, Bauer had already made his mark on the big screen. His breakout role was in Scarface, playing Manny, Tony Montana's smooth-talking right-hand man, a part that made him a star back in the 80s. He went on to appear in crime dramas and thrillers like Traffic, proving he's always had a knack for bringing intensity to every role. In Breaking Bad, Bauer took on the role of Don Eladio, the charming yet ruthless kingpin who ruled over the cartel. With his casual arrogance and unforgettable grin, Don Eladio's scenes were some of the show's most tense. And let's be honest, seeing him take a sip from that poison drink was the kind of moment that sticks with you. After Breaking Bad, Bauer kept up his presence in crime dramas and thrillers, popping up in shows like Ray Donovan and Better Call Saul, where he gave us a deeper dive into the cartel's backstory. He's also had a string of movie roles, including indie films and action flicks. Beyond acting, Stephen Bohr's kept a relatively low profile, but he's been open about his love for fitness and his dedication to staying healthy. He's even shared a few workout tips with fans. Salud. Hello. Let's take a closer look at RJ Mitta, the actor who brought us the ever-loyal Walter White Jr. And while you might remember him best for those breakfast scenes, Trust me, there's a lot more to his story. Before he was breaking eggs in our hearts on Breaking Bad, he had a small role in Hannah Montana and a couple of indie projects that gave him a taste of Hollywood, but it was his breakout role as Walt Jr. that really put him on the map. He brought a realness to the character, especially considering his own experience with cerebral palsy. He made Walt Jr.'s struggles and his love for a good breakfast so relatable, adding layers to the white family dynamic. And let's not forget, he had some of the show's most emotional moments. Who else could make Dad? Why don't you just die already? Hit so hard? Since Breaking Bad, RJ has taken on roles in Switched at Birth, starred in indie films like The Recall, and even had a go at modeling. But he's also become a passionate advocate for disability representation, speaking out at events, and even serving on the Screen Actors Guild's committee for performers with disabilities. 
Mita revealed in an Instagram post that he has been in a relationship with Kennedy Blair since 2022. Fun fact, he's a major gamer, and if you follow him online, you'll catch him streaming and geeking out about all things tech. I mean, why gotta be, why, why you gotta be such a, a bitch? Hey, 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 hey. Betsy Brandt, the actress who made us all love and sometimes cringe at, the unforgettable Marie Schrader. But before she was swiping spoons and obsessing over the perfect shade of purple, Betsy had already built up an impressive acting career. You might have caught her in shows like Without a Trace and Judging Amy. On Breaking Bad, Betsy brought Marie Schrader to life with a mix of comedy and raw emotion. Her purple obsession became iconic, and her complex relationship with Hank added depth to a character who could have easily been just comic relief. Who could forget the time she tried to snag that baby tiara? Marie was always meddling, but it was clear that underneath it all, she was just trying to keep her family together, especially during the show's darker moments. Since Breaking Bad, Betsy hasn't slowed down one bit. She jumped into comedy with The Michael J. Fox Show and then tackled more serious roles in shows like Parenthood and Life in Pieces. On the personal side, Betsy's a mom of two, and she's kept things down to earth, much like Marie's sister Skylar. Minus the criminal empire, of course. Let it go! Let it go! Let it go! Let's dive into the career of Michael Bowen, the man who brought us the ruthless, neo-Nazi Uncle Jack. But before he was causing chaos in Albuquerque, Bowen starred in cult classics like Valley Girl and showed up in Quentin Tarantino's Jackie Brown and Kill Bill, where his knack for playing edgy, intense characters became crystal clear. Then came Breaking Bad, and Bowen's portrayal of Uncle Jack took the show's final season to a whole new level. His cold, calculating performance brought an unforgettable darkness to the series. Who could forget that final standoff with Walt? Or how Uncle Jack turned Todd into the eeriest protege ever? After the show, Bowen popped up in The Last Ship, delivering the same gritty vibe fans love, and had a role in Django Unchained. You may have also seen him on a few episodes of the show Animal Kingdom. On the personal side, Bowen's family has deep roots in Hollywood. He's actually the son of actress Sonia Sorrell and the half-brother of Robert and Keith Carradine. He's kept his off-screen life pretty private, but you can tell he's got acting in his blood. Toddy, get him off, would you? Yeah, Toddy, get him both off. <laughs> Jeremiah Bitsui, the guy who made Victor Gus's loyal henchman so unforgettable. You might remember Victor's fate was one of the show's most shocking moments. Yeah, we're talking about that infamous box cutter scene. Before Breaking Bad, Bitsui's big break came with a role in Natural Born Killers, directed by Oliver Stone, where he played a young Native American. He also appeared in A Thousand Roads, a film that highlighted his talent for playing intense and complex characters. In Breaking Bad, Victor was more than just muscle. He was Gus Fring's go-to enforcer. He was the kind of guy who thought he had it all under control. Until he didn't. That moment when Gus made an example out of him? It was a turning point that showed no one was safe, no matter how careful they thought they were. After Breaking Bad, Jeremiah went on to star in Longmire and is a key player in the critically acclaimed show Yellowstone. On a personal note, Jeremiah is proud of his roots, often using his platform to advocate for Native American representation in Hollywood. Jesse Plemons, the man who gave us the unforgettable, creepy charm of Todd Alquist. But before he was making us all feel deeply uncomfortable with that cold, polite smile, Jesse had been building a solid career. If you were a fan of Friday Night Lights, you probably remember him as Landry Clark, the lovable, dorky high schooler with a heart of gold. He also had roles in Like Mike and Varsity Blues. On Breaking Bad, Plemons played Todd, the polite psychopath who could serve you tea one minute and handle a hit the next without batting an eye. He brought a chilling normalcy to the role, which made his scenes some of the most unsettling in the show's final seasons. Remember the train heist? Only Todd could make something so dangerous look so casual. And let's not even get started on what happened with poor Drew Sharp. Fun fact, fans of Breaking Bad nicknamed him Meth Damon due to Plemons' resemblance to actor Matt Damon. After Breaking Bad, Jesse earned critical acclaim for roles in movies like Black Mass and Game Night. 
showcasing his impressive range from crime dramas to dark comedies. His standout performance in Fargo even earned him an Emmy nomination, and he's continued to make waves with powerful roles in films like The Irishman and Judas and The Black Messiah. Recently, he starred in Martin Scorsese's Killers of the Flower Moon and played a compelling role in Civil War. Up next, Pleemans joins Robert De Niro in Netflix's political thriller Zero Day, reuniting with Love and Death director Leslie Linka Glatter. He'll also star in the sci-fi comedy Bugonia. Outside of acting, Jesse's life remains pretty low-key. He's married to actress Kirsten Dunst, and they share two kids. No! 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 Kevin Rankin, the actor who brought us the always smirking and dangerously loyal Kenny, a key member of Uncle Jack's crew. But before he was dealing with barrels of cash and following orders in the desert, Rankin had already made a name for himself on TV. He popped up in cult favorites like Buffy the Vampire Slayer and had solid roles in dramas like Friday Night Lights and Justified. As Kenny in Breaking Bad, Rankin brought a casual menace to the role, making his character a memorable part of the final season's chaos. Who can forget the scene where he casually monitors the meth lab or taunts Jesse with that cold smile? He added a layer of dark comedy that only Breaking Bad could pull off. After Breaking Bad, Rankin kept the momentum going, diving into shows like Lucifer and The Umbrella Academy, where his roles ranged from charming detectives to gritty villains. He's also starred in critically acclaimed films like Dallas Buyers Club and Hell or High Water. Charles Baker, the man who turned Skinny Pete from a minor character into one of the show's most unexpected fan favorites. But before he was rocking those oversized beanies and dropping memorable one-liners, Baker was carving out a career in indie films and making guest appearances on TV shows like Monk and Walker, Texas Ranger. Then came Breaking Bad, where Charles Baker took Skinny Pete, a low-level addict with a surprisingly big heart. Who else could make playing the piano in a meth house seem almost poetic? Skinny Pete wasn't just comic relief. He showed us that even the fringe characters in Breaking Bad had depth and heart. After Breaking Bad, Charles Baker has taken on a range of roles in TV and film, from the popular series The Blacklist and The Mandalorian to a moving part in The Neon Demon. He even reprised his role as Skinny Pete in El Camino. On the personal side, Charles is a family man. He's got two kids and has spoken openly about balancing his acting career with fatherhood, something that's probably a little more stable than Skinny Pete's usual adventures. Yo, man, I'm Skinny Pete! <laughs> Mad L. Jones, the guy who brought us the lovable goofball Brandon Mayhew, the character who made us laugh even in the darkest corners of Albuquerque's illegal scene. Before his time on the show, Mad had guest spots in shows like How I Met Your Mother and Community, and his distinctive voice got him early gigs in animation, hinting at the quirky style he'd become known for. As Brandon, Matt delivered some of the funniest moments in the show. Whether he was getting busted by law enforcement or pitching the wildest ideas to his friend, Brandon's clueless optimism and unique, raspy voice were unforgettable. Who else could make a serious moment sound like a stand-up comedy routine? After the show, Matt's career took off. He's been everywhere, starring in hit TV shows like Mom, taking on roles in comedies like Let's Get Physical, and even making waves in animation. His voice has brought characters to life in shows like Adventure Time and Ralph Breaks the Internet. Recently, he's also had a role in Bob Hart's Abishola, proving that his comedic chops are as sharp as ever. And for you gamers out there, his distinctive voice has made appearances in several video games like the Final Fantasy franchise in Rage. Duke City Flowers? Come on! Can you at least be original? Let's talk about Raymond Cruz the man who brought us the explosive and unpredictable Tuco Salamanca. Tuco might be one of the most intense characters in TV history, but before he was terrifying us with those crazy outbursts, Cruz starred in action-packed movies like Clear, Rock, Alien Resurrection, and Present Danger, and played a gritty gang member in Training Day and Blood in Blood Out. As Tuco, Cruz gave us a character who was both terrifying and captivating, from his unpredictable mood swings to his infamous love of saying, tight, tight, tight. 
Zerania Tuco's short but impactful presence in Breaking Bad set the tone for the danger that lay ahead. Fans will always remember his brutal scenes with Walt and Jesse, not to mention that unforgettable desert showdown. After Breaking Bad, Cruz reprised his role as Tuco in Better Call Saul. He also starred in the long-running crime series Major Crimes as Detective Julio Sanchez. And if you're into suspense, he's had appearances in shows like The Closer and Blue Bloods. On the personal side, Raymond Cruz is known for keeping a pretty low profile. He's an outdoor enthusiast with a love for motorcycles, which might explain some of Tuco's wild energy. He's also a family man. Cruz is married to fellow actress Simi Mehta, whom he co-starred with on The X-Files in the episode El Mundo Gira. Tight, 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 yeah! Uh, blue, yellow, pink, whatever, man, just keep bringing me that. Hey, Breaking Bad fans, today we're spotlighting the legendary Mark Margolis, the man behind Hector Salamanca. But before he was ringing that infamous bell, Margolis made his mark in films like Scarface, where he played Alberto the Shadow and was a frequent collaborator with director Darren Aronofsky, appearing in films like Pie and Requiem for a Dream. You've also seen him in Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, End of Days, The Fountain, Gone Baby Gone, and many other films. As Hector Salamanca, Margolis took silence and tension to a whole new level. Who could forget the explosive confrontation between Hector and Gus Fring? Margolis managed to convey more with a glare than most actors can with a monologue, making Hector a fan-favorite villain without saying a single word. It's proof that you don't need dialogue to steal a scene, just a well-timed bell and one cold stare. After Breaking Bad, Margolis kept the momentum going, reprising his role as Hector in Better Call Saul. He's also appeared in shows like American Horror Story and continued his film work, showing he's still got that captivating screen presence. Sadly, Mark died in 2023 at the age of 83. If he's no longer with us, his legacy remains strong, leaving behind a career that spanned decades. <laughs> Meet Daniel Moncada, the actor who brought the intense, silent menace of Lionel Salamanca to life. But before he was one half of the infamous Cousins, Daniel had a surprising start. He wasn't originally an actor. In fact, he found his way to Hollywood after working as a security guard, and his first taste of the industry was in smaller TV roles, getting a feel for the screen. Then came his big break. As Lionel Salamanca, Daniel's stoic, stone-cold expression became a signature of Breaking Bad's tense, edge-of-your-seat scenes. With almost no dialogue, he managed to make Lionel one of the most terrifying and memorable characters in the show's history. Paired with his real-life brother Luis, who played Marco, the twins had fans on edge with their ruthless determination. Fun fact, despite playing twins in both series, Luis is actually around three years older than Daniel in real life. After Breaking Bad, Daniel reprised the role of Leonel in Better Call Saul. He's also had roles in popular shows like Sons of Anarchy and The Night Shift, often sticking to those intense, no-nonsense characters that suit him so well. Recently, he's been dipping into the action genre with a few indie films, and he's always got new projects on the horizon. Kristen Ritter, the actress who played Jane Margolis. But before she was changing Jesse's world, Kristen had already made a splash in Hollywood. You might have caught her in comedies like Gilmore Girls or Veronica Mars, where she brought a quirky and edgy charm to the screen. In Breaking Bad, Kristen played Jane, the edgy and complicated artist who stole Jesse's heart. Her chemistry with Aaron Paul was electric, making their relationship feel real and raw. Jane's tragic fate became one of the most unforgettable and pivotal moments in the show, pushing Walt further down his dark path and leaving Jesse and us, the fans, devastated. After Breaking Bad, Kristen took on the lead role in Marvel's Jessica Jones, where she transformed into a hard-hitting detective earning acclaim for her layered and fierce performance. She's also had standout roles in movies like Big Eyes and The Hero. Beyond acting, she's an author, having published a best-selling thriller novel, Bonfire. Kristen's also dabbled in fashion, designing her own line that captures her unique style, equal parts rock and chic. And if you follow her on social media, you'll know she's a proud mom and passionate advocate for animal rights. Laura Fraser, the actress who played the impeccably anxious Lydia, the woman who made even pouring a cup of tea feel stressful. 
But before she was obsessing over purity percentages in the labs, Fraser already starred in A Knight's Tale and had a leading role in Vanilla Sky, showing her range with characters that were confident, smart, and just a little mysterious. Perfect training for her future role in Breaking Bad. As Lydia, Laura brought a unique mix of vulnerability and ruthlessness. Always nervous, always meticulous, Lydia was the ultimate corporate villain. A white-collar mastermind with a knack for whispering deadly secrets over the phone. Remember that scene where she insisted on Stevia for her tea? That tells you everything you need to know about Lydia. Precise, paranoid, and always trying to keep her hands and her shoes spotless, even as she got deeper into the mess. Since Breaking Bad, Laura Fraser has taken on leading roles in hit TV series like The Missing, Crime, and Traces, proving that she can still command the screen with complex, intense characters. On a personal side, Laura's married to Carl Geary, they live in Scotland, and have one daughter. And I'm assuming you don't have Stevia. Never mind. I brought my own. Meet Rodney Rush, the actor who brought us Combo, Jesse's laid-back, street-smart buddy. Before he was part of the Albuquerque crew, Rodney didn't have a huge Hollywood presence, but he was carving out his path in the local music and acting scene. As Combo, Rodney brought a sense of loyalty and humor to Jesse's circle. He was the kind of friend you knew was always down for whatever, even if whatever got him into some serious trouble. Fans will never forget the intense moment when Combo's run as a dealer came to a heartbreaking end. Since his time on Breaking Bad, Rodney Rush has stayed active, but in some unexpected ways. He's leaned heavily into his love for music, performing as a rapper and DJ, and bringing his energy from the screen to the stage. He's been involved in local events, using his platform to connect with fans and stay true to his Albuquerque roots. Yo, you buying or you just stopping Envy? Curious about where other iconic TV casts ended up? Just let me know in the comments if you want a deep dive on Justified, Sons of Anarchy, Mad Men, Dexter, The Wire, you name it. And while you're waiting, check out Vano VHS's latest, The Sopranos. Where are they now? See you next time on Vano VHS.